in case you confuse it for Lake Chapeau, Louisiana. Also, there is no Lake Chapeau in Switzerland, but there is in Louisiana. This is where they parked their surveillance van. What? They couldn't get any closer? How come billionaires are always short? How come no one can ever hear a character talking to themselves when they have earpieces in? Harry's in a very crowded room, and the music isn't loud enough to drown out his poor attempts at Seinfeldian questions. If there are parts of this house that are off limits to party guests, and why wouldn't there be, why aren't there any security staff around to keep the guests out of the restricted areas? They had plenty of security outside. The super restricted third floor office has a large table with a dozen Granny Smith apples in a clawed bowl. The subtitles here say that Arnold's character speaks in perfect Arabic, and we all know that Arnold cannot speak perfect anything except Austrian. Juno Skinner. Juno Skinner. Juno Skinner. Juno Skinner. And the man in the back said everyone attack and it turned into a ballroom bleep, ballroom bleep. Harry is addicted to Obermans. That's Arnold as much as I'm Arnold, which is to say that's not Arnold. Gib never crashes this van. I'm pretty sure every member of Khaled's security team graduated summa cum laude at the Stormtrooper School for aiming at things. I realize it's a movie and they want us to see certain things, but who could sleep in a bedroom this covered by light? I'd be suing my neighbors over this shit. Hey, you late for school, you better get going. Don't forget the fit gizmo. The movie presents this as a dad being too rules-oriented or something. I'm not quite sure. But my point is, this is all good dadding. She's a preteen or early teen. She needs constant reminders about her responsibilities because she has not yet developed the habits of fulfilling one's personal responsibilities. And this is part of what growing up is all about. Dad is fine. He did nothing wrong. Reminding a kid to feed their ugly pet is good parenting. Hello? Entering someone's home without knocking or ringing a doorbell, but just acting like you live here, like a dick, a.k.a. Skippy Handleman. Okay, he's got new tech that is a camera disguised as a very specific kind of cigarettes, but our Arnold's character hasn't been shown to smoke cigarettes. However hidden this camera may be, it's not disguised at all when it's on the mantle in a living room in the house of people who don't smoke. Where's the image coming from? Got a CCD camera and a transmitter and a pack of smokes out there. Best damn spy show, period. What purpose does this long white hallway serve? They had to do clearance to get into this hallway. There are cameras here. What is even going on? Does the CIA have a mandate to waste money on minimalist long ass hallways? The f what is happening here? There are two guards behind glass, but the glass only covers 75% of the area they are in with a 25% opening for, I guess that's where you run to shoot at bad guys. And how many bad guys get through the hand and eye sensors? Enough to need two armed guards? Why are they encased in glass? Get well, get well soon. We want you to get well. Do we know where she is? Right here in River City. Music Man references always play at the C. I'm talking about I. I'm talking about A. That stands for spy, and that rhymes with pool. You have a suite at the Marquee Hotel under the name of Renquist. You got him a suite under a fake name, but didn't clean the windshield of this limo? If you ice your cake while holding a small dog above said cake, you can be certain I will not eat your dog hair cake, and you should take some courses on food safety. This is the problem with terrorists. They're really inconsiderate when it comes to people's schedules. There's tone deaf, and then there's whatever this is. Wearing sunglasses at night. As a spy, you are trying not to stand out, right? Uh-oh, looks like this guy brought a knife to a Schwarzenegger fight. Let's slow this shit down. The bad guy shoots at Tom Arnold, who is not skinny. Tom Arnold, who is not skinny, then takes cover behind an incredibly thin pole. The bad guy fires at the pole, but somehow does not hit Tom Arnold. That's five sins easy. This urban horse-based chase clearly inspired John Wick 3. Maybe even part of Elf, now that I think about it. The cops after the motorcycle on a horse, and it's like a battle between motors and horses. Like... Technology versus horse. Elevator is conveniently big enough to fit a motorcycle in it. Elevator is conveniently big enough to fit a full-grown horse in it. What hotel elevator just lets people go all the way up to the roof when there isn't even an active event happening up there? True Lies, brought to you by Kawasaki and Marriott. If you're not riding the best motorbikes and staying at the best hotels, then the terrorists have won. This works. Man, Marriott's getting their money's worth here for sure. I'm really curious about how Helen has never figured out what Harry actually does for a living. There is zero chance a man riding a horse chasing a guy with a semi-automatic gun didn't make the news. And I'm assuming that wasn't the first time Harry's been involved in an incident that crazy in front of so many witnesses. Helen should have at the very least seen a picture of him in the newspaper or on the nightly newscast. Harry makes his partner sit in the car while he goes to have lunch with his wife. Harry is an ass face. Helen is having an affair. I really wish we could skip this, but since the movie decides to waste so much precious time on this f***ing silly and sleazy subplot, I'm just gonna go ahead and add 10 sins for not being able to skip it and having to suffer through it. What kind of a sick b takes the ice cube trays out of the freezer? From what I've seen of your character thus far, probably someone who knows that you don't deserve ice. Women. Can't live with them. Can't kill them. Maybe James Cameron's heart was in this after all. If you think your wife is cheating on you, you should not tap her phone, even if you have access to that kind of technology. Instead, you should try talking to her or finding your own side piece. Why doesn't Harry wear a wedding ring at home? I get maybe not wearing it when you're on the spy job, but he's at home now. And he was actually wearing one on the job earlier. Is there any reason he can't use an umbrella right now? 
Is there any reason he can't use an umbrella right now? What is with Harry in this movie and his anger towards canines? God damn, we're supposed to like Harry, right? The idea that Harry and Helen both find parking spaces at lunchtime in downtown DC might be the most ludicrous scene in this movie. How about a little spin? What kind of car salesman drives the car he's trying to sell instead of letting the customer do the driving? He's got the most incredible body and a pair of titties make you want to stand up and beg for buttermilk. I would say this is offensive, which it is, but mainly I don't even know what the f it means. Who would ever beg for fucking buttermilk in any kind of metaphorical scenario? Reading transcripts of your wife's phone calls while driving. Actually, reading anything while driving. What's happened? It's serious. Meet me on K Street. This movie does Jamie Lee all kinds of wrong, such as in scenes with Simon where she has to become one of the dumbest people on the planet. I get she wishes Harry was a little more exciting and blah, 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 but it's hard to root for a character that is dumb enough to fall for Simon's bullshit. And there's no other scenario that shows Helen being anywhere near this stupid. Also, the Simon character honestly doesn't even fit into this movie. True Lies can't seem to decide if it's an overblown yet serious action movie or if it's a straight up parody. It's much more convincing with the former because James Cameron has his talents, but writing and directing comedy isn't one of them. You can't pull ages off a of priority surveillance to follow your wife. Apparently he can, and he will suffer no consequences for it. I mean, other than his wife and he and their daughter ending up kidnapped by terrorists, but no work-based consequences. But also, the entire rest of the movie happens solely because Harry pulled CIA agents off their surveilling terrorist job to kidnap his wife's maybe lover. He doesn't do this, so I'm not sure anything else that happens can actually happen. What about the time you blew a six-week operation because we're busy getting a blowjob, huh? There's something not right about the way Arnold says blowjob. I can't put my finger on it, but it doesn't sound natural. It's like he's never said that word before, and honestly, I don't want to hear him say it again. Okay, now the woman has her head in the guy's lap. Why would the agent report back with this information? He already established two people were in the car. Their position in the car wouldn't matter one bit. It's as if he knew this was Harry putting them on a bull detail to spy on his wife and he was trying to stick it to Harry. That also would have been a more interesting angle than the way this whole plan plays out. Wonder Condor, you got a visual. Holy sh now we've gone too far. I refuse to believe Harry is high enough in the CIA food chain to discreetly order goddamn helicopter surveillance without approval from above. But also, this chopper is way too close and low, and both occupants of that convertible would be aware of its presence. How does he not get caught driving the merchandise for personal reasons? And if he owns the car lot, thereby giving him permission to use the Corvette, why does he live in a trailer? I don't think it's possible to point out too many times how f***ing stupid it is that Harry doesn't face any consequences for wasting probably thousands, if not millions, of tax dollars on this bullshit operation he concocts. This is so gross a misuse of government assets, it's worthy of congressional oversight. Though, honestly, that rarely leads to any real consequences anyway, so f*** it. Sit down. This is 100% psychological and emotional abuse, and the movie thinks it's hilarious. You were not attracted to him at all? She should realize at this point, these aren't questions law enforcement would ask, right? Right? I have only one more question, Mrs. Tasca. They are applying a voice deepening filter to his mic, but how does the mic remove his obvious Austrian-speaking English accent? What are you doing, Harry? Just giving a little assignment. You gotta be shitting me. My comment when I realized the Helen and Simon subplot has taken up 30 minutes of the movie and it's still fing going. Somehow it makes its way into the film. I'm nothing. I'm naval lint. If you had told me before watching this, Bill Paxton's character would be more annoying than Tom Arnold's, I wouldn't believe you. But here we are. Get lost, dipsh. Gibb is firing at Simon while turning his head. This was way closer to straight up murder than it needed to be. Can't believe you're crazy enough to use the suite at the marquee. I can't believe the suite at the marquee is still available to him. That was days ago, no? As she as the screenplay treats the character of Helen, Jamie Lee Curtis goes all in and gives easily the best performance in the movie. You are a prostitute named Michelle. This is exactly how my first college relationship started. If you do not complete your mission, the deal is off. I'm gonna go to hell. It's cute that he thinks he's only just now earned his ticket to hell. I appreciate this scene where she remakes her dress to be less conservative and more sexy, but who designed the initial dress in the first place with all the mosquito netting around the limbs? It's almost like this dress was designed to be improved by ripping half of it off. Stealing water from plants. Casually drinking something a total stranger left for you. There is 100% enough light in here for Helen to at least think, hey, this weirdo looks an awful lot like my husband. Maybe that deserves further investigation, but none of that happens. You may start by unzipping your dress. No, no. Done or wrong. It's a good thing when Harry had these sentences recorded, he knew that Helen would be facing him when she started to undo her dress. How did he even know she would be wearing a dress with a zipper? I don't want to show you the actual dancing, because honestly, the YouTube kids filter gets kind of prickly around near nudity, but it's a scene I definitely need to say something about, and that something is, don't you have to train and, you know, learn how to dance like a stripper? This movie wants to be saying she has a seductive side he's never seen before, but it's really saying is she learned five months of dance moves in 30 seconds and spontaneously. Now lie on the bed and close your eyes. Harry is able to rewind a cassette to the exact point he needs it to be at, and that is some bullshit. 
Okay, so maybe Harry does want her to know it's him, but how the f*** does he think this is going to go? This is the f***ing guy we trust with all the nation's biggest threats and secrets? He is clearly a goddamn moron. Harry. Harry's marriage survives this. Okay! Oh hey, remember the bad guys? Yeah, there's bad guys in this movie. Other than Harry. Just shooting anyone with a random tranquilizer is very dangerous. Unless you've factored in body weight, allergies, food and alcohol consumption, etc. You could just as easily be assigning said person to their death sentence. Maybe some of this could have been known about Harry, but they didn't know who Helen was until now. They depart DC in a private jet, then land via helicopter at an unnamed destination. I know I rag on the place names in movies, but that's usually for places that are obvious. Like, when you show the Washington Monument, I know you're in DC, and I don't also need Washington DC in text on the screen, but this here is it's just a pier with a warehouse. They could be in Cuba for all we know. And they're in the Florida Keys because of the bridge they blow up later. But still, this is the kind of scene change that actually requires a place name of some kind. The absolutely priceless. Pity. Then they break the horse statue and there are weapons inside, which means these are fakes, which means it's not a pity at all. Some free association for you. Nukes. Nukes and horses. Horse bombs. Horse apples. Apple cider. Apple spider. Apple snider. What can I say? I'm a spy. Now seems as good a time as any to ask why does Harry never tell his wife what he does? There's no law that says CIA agents have to lie to their spouses, so whatever counterterrorism organization this is shouldn't have to either. It actually has to be more helpful if the spouses and children are aware so they're not accidentally f***ing anything up for said agent when they're working. Like the trouble Helen telling Juno she was Harry's wife cost. Harry is the f***ing worst. You have killed our women and our children? This couldn't be a more stereotypically written and racially insensitive villain if he was in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is a humorous bit with the battery running out and a guy not wanting to interrupt the main terrorist speech to tell him, but it belongs in a different movie. This movie's all over the place tonally, and I almost kind of dig it. I said almost. Why are you helping these raving psychotics? Because they're very well-funded raving psychotics. Live golf. This guy looks like Hagrid if he was played by Daniel Radcliffe. Have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. Except the dogs, Harry. Tell her what you do to dogs, you maniac. Honey, it makes them duck. What does that even mean? The bad guy had a hold of her hair. She couldn't f***ing duck. <laughs> Wasting bullets. I know she said they were well-funded, but goddamn. No one sees them. We must be in the Florida Keys. There's no borders, no customs. They can go anywhere in the U.S. There's nothing to stop them. And yet, you never hear politicians clamoring about the danger of the customs-less Florida Keys, only the customs had thing border at Mexico. See, if they had taught us how to use a rope like this in gym class, I might have actually tried, because that looks fucking cool. So the sin, as always, is gym class. There's a nuke encased in concrete nearby, but Harry throws a grenade at a group of canisters containing flammable gas. Wait, why are there a bunch of barrels of flammable gas here? Is this a video game? It's oozy, it's oozy, for fun it's a wonderful toy. It's fun for a girl or a boy. Harry knows how this random device attached to a petroleum truck works, because of course he does. I mean, I guess that knowledge makes more sense than the ability to tango. We may need the hostage. What? Why? You guys think you just killed Harry. You don't have any reason to keep his wife as a hostage. The bomb is gonna blow up soon. What the f*** are you doing, dude? Arnold surfaces just in time to see his wife being led to the limo, because this movie only believes in three things. Coincidences, misogyny, and violent murders that somehow leave no blood. Put me through to the White House. Can a random CIA helicopter guy actually do that, though? Two people talking on different phones right next to each other in a flying open-air helicopter. There is zero chance either of them can hear the other person they're talking to. Pouring champagne into a glass being held by a hand that also currently has bad trigger discipline while driving over a bridge. I'm shocked Helen survives this. I bet the day they shot this, all the actors and James Cameron when we're fucking geeked about this shot of the Harrier flyby because it wasn't their money they were spending. Line Zero One's got a tally on three trucks. He's pound on the bridge. Roger, Line Zero One, you're clear to engage. But when Gibb brought up the two Marine Corps Harriers, Harry said, I'll brief them on the way in. Then the Harriers show up 30 seconds later and Harry hasn't had time to brief them and just gives them the broad instruction of engage. How the f do they know what they're supposed to engage or what they're even looking for? How does a truck even get through all this fire and wreckage? The majority of the truck that took the explosion was intact enough to where the other truck couldn't pass. These missiles won't set off those nukes, will they? Negative. That's a negative, Flame Zero One. Harry was able to tell Aziz every single detail about the nuclear warhead, but now he's confused about whether or not the jets firing will set them off. 
Harry knows Helen is in one of those vehicles, so why is he taking such a chance? He could easily kill her executing these orders. And I get that the goal should be to stop the nukes, but Harry hasn't exactly played by the rules up until now, so I'm not sure why he would change here. You know, if you're gonna steal a delivery van and then use it to transport a nuke to the US from the Florida Keys, where there are no borders or customs, you don't actually need to paint a fake company logo of a fancy Navy mister about to bite a donut that a parrot is currently perched upon. Wait, what? The truck explodes because it hit Water? Very few people know this, but Quentin Tarantino actually shot this scene. As the we the viewers aren't sick of seeing Arnie's stunt double, who looks nothing like Arnie, here we have his character climbing out on the leg of a helicopter. I think this stunt double is in like one fourth of the movie. <laughs> what a fucking shot! James Cameron really thought there's nothing more romantic than a kiss set against a nuclear weapon exploding. Harry, they got a hostage. It's Dana. What? Aziz just saw the picture of Dana the previous night. How did he get someone down to DC to grab her and back to Miami in this amount of time? And f***ing why? I'm sure Aziz isn't exactly thrilled with Harry f***ing up so much of his plan, but for the entire movie, Aziz has been a big picture kind of villain. And now he's wasting manpower and expenses to send a guy to DC to kidnap a 13-year-old kid for a personal vendetta? I, we, are all prepared to die. Dude, you literally just set off the Lonely Island nuke three minutes ago. Maybe give the US time to absorb that a bit before you go on the air live again? None of these bullets hit Dana. And give me that address again. Fucking why? Does the Harrier jet have GPS? Can you view mailboxes from the air? You shoot me, this will fall! Here's the kind of teenage daughter you only find in movies. The kind willing to literally risk their lives for the greater good mere moments after being kidnapped. She doesn't even know her dad is a CIA agent. She just did this out of pure moral balls. Why is Aziz surprised that Harry is there? Didn't he want Harry to be there? He kidnapped his fucking daughter. Jump! I can't! Which is technically true. She can fall, but not really jump in her current position. This movie sure does love it some nut shots. Maybe get Dana secure in the jet with you before you take off again, since you have a second to No? Okay. Yeah, it probably makes more sense to leave her out there clinging for her life. You're fired. God damn you, movie! Hi, Pupkin. Harry and Dana's father-daughter relationship survives this. I gotta keep up the waiter bit. Oh good, we get to see what's going on with Simon, because that's an important plot point. It all knew how much lost. I once knew a girl who lived on Gordon Street, a long time ago. I just asked him to tell me about his day. Six seconds and I'm out. <laughs> But he acts like he's curing cancer or something. I call you Pimple Popper, MD! You know, the idealist and the archaeologist don't really like you very much. I don't like you either. You aren't supposed to come out of the truck. You got him, but who got me? This is Simon. Did you sleep with him? Curry, get on the ground before I pop your f***ing teeth out. She's lying. Hi, my name is Winifred. I love the smell of my pump in the morning. Shut up! Ooh, cat fight. Harry! Harry! Get to the chopper! Harry, they get a hostage. It's Dana. There is no Dana, only soul. Oh no. Tango. 